Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Thank you for joining me once again. There's an awful lot of things to cover today. And so right off, I'll tell you guys, this is a new mic. This is my third microphone. This one's a little bit actually cheaper than the last one. Uh, well, we shall see how it goes because the last one was so highly sensitive. And where I normally record, it is very, very small. <laughs> so it's like an echo chamber. Uh, but let's start over here in, in uh, Greece. And so more than 35 people killed as a highway bridge collapses during a fierce storm in Genoa, Italy. And um, dozens or more are feared dead. Really, they, they got to clear this up and see, you know, who is trapped where. This is just a tremendous. Um, well, let me start off by showing you some pictures just so you could get an idea. Here we see this huge span that is gone. And so this whole section in the middle collapsed. As here you see what the bridge had looked like before the collapse. So this is a massive collapse in Genoa. And you can see right here, I mean, like that truck, that guy that was driving that truck was damn lucky that he wasn't just a few more feet ahead. And that's another view of it. Tremendous, uh, huge crash there. Up to 35 cars and a few heavy-duty trucks, along with tons of twisted steel and concrete, fell down some 300 feet into a river and railroad tracks after a 600-foot-long section of the Morandi Bridge collapsed. Eyewitnesses said they saw the bridge being struck by lightning and wobbling before it collapsed. So the the bridge was struck by lightning and wobbling from the lightning strike. I've never heard that ever in my life. In 53 years, this is the first uh, to hear. The central pillar crumbled first and everything else came on down, one witness said. I saw people running towards me barefoot and terrified. I, hear, I heard a roar. People ran away, coming towards me. It was horrible. Alberto Lacari. A bus driver told Correa de la Serra, more than 240 fire brigade units and rescue teams are searching for survivors, but they're now fearful of explosions from damaged gas lines. And, and there is a video for you to see there as well as there and there and there. So there's quite a few videos for you guys to check out attached to this. This is from the Watchers. They always do a great job. This is just the latest in a string of bridge collapses in Italy. So they're not going to say that the lightning strike was the de definitive cause. But, you know, the infrastructure needs to be upgraded, uh, obviously. But still, how can you, how can you have known that, you know, perhaps, you know, a lightning strike would have the power to send a bridge tumbling down like this if that was truly the case and the cause Oof, just um pretty devastating my friends and our own governor scott here in florida declares a state of emergency due to the devastating red tide algae bloom and as we speak a very good friend of mine is getting out of the ER um, for breathing issues. And the doctor said, yeah, he thinks it probably is related to the red tide. And then the doctor actually shared that people are leaving the area in droves and um, just, you know, leaving the area because of this. This is really a serious, serious issue. It's making a ton of people sick down here. And I've shared with you guys, I've stayed away from my place uh, for the last several weeks. And, you know, getting away from being by the coast where this is happening, my lungs cleared right up and I started to feel great again. So it's truly extremely toxic. And, and long-term exposure to this stuff has been shown to bring on things such as Alzheimer's and dementia. Uh, as well as other health problems, obviously bronchitis and, you know, breathing issues for sure. 
as well as um, a sinus infection, which my friend was diagnosed with, a sinus infection as well. Thank you, Red Tide. Thank you, you know, all those corporations that contributed to this. Yeah, we really, really appreciate them uh, destroying this beautiful state. Uh, it's just, it's horrible. Longboat Key, tons of dead fish, a smell so awful you gag with just one in inhale. Empty beach, beaches, empty roads, empty restaurants. The toxic algae bloom has overrun Florida's southern Gulf Coast this summer, devastating sea life, driving people from the water and just from the entire area. I have never seen it this bad, said 31-year-old Heather Lamb of Venice. She's a hairdresser and a makeup artist who styled herself as a dead mermaid and posted photos on social media to raise awareness of the problem. I feel like it cleanses your soul to go to the beach, so for me not to be able to go, it's painful. I think a lot of people take for granted when they live in Florida. Some people save their paychecks for a whole year to come here. Red tide, a naturally occurring toxic algae bloom that can be harmful to people with respiratory problems and, and even those without. When it's this strong, it doesn't matter if you have respiratory issues or not. It's spread all throughout the Gulf of Mexico, drifting in the water since it began in October, stretching out about 150 miles. It's affecting communities from Naples to Anna Maria Island, and it appears to be moving northward now. On Monday, Florida Governor Rick Scott declared a state of emergency due to the impacts of red tide in Collier, Lee, Charlotte, Sarasota, Manatee, Hillsborough, and Pinella as well counties. Through the executive order, Scott is providing state funding to local governments and research agencies, allowing the rapid movement of resources to local communities in response to red tide impacts in southwest Florida and Tampa Bay. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just killed so, so many. In late July, a 26-foot-long whale shark washed ashore in Sanibel. In Lombo Key, more than five tons of dead fish have been removed from the beaches. This week, nine dead dolphins were found in Sarasota County. That's just horrible, you know, and marine biologists are investigating whether deaths are related to the red tide. You know, sure they are. There's, you know, 450 stranded and dead sea turtles. I mean, it just goes on and on and on what, what they've done. And this is really, a, so much of this is a corporate thing. It's, it's run off from the corporations. It's run off from Lake Okeechobee. And, uh, you know, it's a little too little too late for Governor Scott in his response. Prince Edward Island crops devastated by hail. 2,500 homes without power. Farmers are sizing up damage from a severe storm that ripped through PEI, Prince Edward Island. More than 2,500 homes left without power, according to Maritime Electri Electric's outage map. And so, you know, again, more crop loss, more crop loss everywhere. It's really, it's ramping up. I mean, have you seen the, the increases yet at the grocery store? I've definitely noticed them. So I make Zeke's food from scratch, you know, and use things like chicken. And uh, he eats better than many people and eats most often many days uh, far better than I do, honestly. <laughs> Uh, but, you know, I typically make chicken and sweet potatoes and, and different so sorts of greens in his food and cook it all from scratch. And I add turmeric to it um, because he, he does get some uh, inflammatory issues uh, being like a pit bull mix. You know, they're, they're kind of prone to that. And so, I mean, I've seen the chicken costs go way, way, way up. And it's not just that. Everything is, is starting to increase um, pretty substantially. Some of the pumpkin leaves have snapped in areas where the blossoms are, which affects the pumpkin growing, and there will not be a pumpkin because of that. I don't even know where to begin. So this Tanya McKenzie of McKenzie Produce said the hail flattened her sunflowers, bruised her squash, rendering, rendering a lot of this year's harvest just a write-off. And uh, we've seen that tremendous hail ruin crops around the globe and it's with us to stay we have a terror hunt westminster terror attack cops raid homes as they say suspect drove 
around London for hours before Parliament attack. A 29-year-old terror suspect is not cooperating with cops following his arrest on Tuesday morning. And so the cops say this 29-year-old British national drove from Birmingham late last night and spent four hours around Tottenham Court Road before the rampage at 7.40 a.m. Chilling footage showed a Ford Fiesta bought two months ago careen through Westminster before mowing down pedestrians and cyclists. The driver was not armed and was led away by cops and is in custody at a South London police station where he's refusing to cooperate. It felt like a tornado stormed down trees and power lines in College Park. And this is going through the uh, D.C. and College Park areas, as you can see. Um, you know, D.C. and Maryland have really been hit super hard by storms this year. Tons and tons of flooding all through the Mid-Atlantic states. It's been just, you know, week after week, day after day, it's been really particularly hard hit. And um, we're going to see a lot more rain in this area as well, as these patterns have been persisting. And we'll keep our eyes open. And, you know, do you guys remember this skull-shaped asteroid? This was uh, from 2015, so three years ago. It was kind of freaky then. It's freaky now. Well, it's returning. It's coming back. And it's creepier than ever. This 700-meter across asteroid looks uncannily like a skull. It first passed our planet on Halloween 2015. Perfect. Now it's set to make a return November 2018, giving scientists another opportunity to study this strange phenomenon. Pretty damn creepy when you look at that thing. And we shall see. This one, uh, it's known as 2015 TB145. It's going to fly by at a less dramatic distance than the last one. This time it's going to be about 1.3 lunar distances. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be about 105 Earth-Moon distances compared to just the 1.3 lunar distances last time around. And that is actually it, just making its way through space, the skull-shaped asteroid. Alien abduction. 45 years after the alleged UFO encounter, Mississippi man breaks his silence. And it was an event that has been reluctant. He, he has, has been, been reluctant, reluctant to speak about. about. Yet it, it shaped, shaped much of his life. life. Calvin Parker, Parker, now of Moss Point, Point along with friend Charles Hickson, claims they were abducted by aliens while fishing on the Pascagoula River. And now Parker has written a book. He hopes <coughs> we'll set the record straight. Pascagoula, the closest encounter in my story, was recently published. It contained, it contained the first full account of the event given by Parker along with how it affected his life. It includes photos, documents, and newspaper articles written throughout the years. It also marks the last time or the first time a transcription of a hypnosis session with Parker has been published. And Parker hopes it will clear the air. It was October 11, 1973. We had gotten off of work that day. And... A friend, a friend of mine, he and, and I went, went fishing. fishing. The, the old abandoned, abandoned shipyard, shipyard, they had a little pier out front, and we were on the pier. I'm going to guess it was about 6 o'clock in the morning. I had just started getting, it had just started getting dark, but it was kind of a bright moon. He said he noticed blue light reflecting off the water, and his initial thought was law enforcement officers had arrived to tell the two fishermen they needed to leave the property. However, when Parker looked up, he realized the light was coming from a craft like nothing he had ever seen. A big light came out of the clouds, Parker said. It was blinding. It was just hard to tell with the light so bright, but it looked like it was shaped like a football. I would say just estimating it was about 80 feet. It made very little sound. It was just a hissing noise. Then the situation became surreal. Parker said three legless creatures floated from the craft. One had no neck with gray wrinkled skin. Another had a neck and appeared more feminine. Parker described their hands as being shaped like mittens or crab claws. When one of the creatures put its claws around his arm, Parker said he was terrified. But then another feeling came over his body. I think they injected us with something to calm us down. I was kind of numb and went along with the program. He said the creatures floated he and Hickson into the craft and performed physical examinations on the two. They were then taken back to the bank of the river. 
Parker said he didn't want to tell anyone what happened, but Hickson convic convinced him otherwise. The two contacted Kessler or Kiesler Air Force Base, but they were told they should just call local authorities. So they contacted the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. According to Parker, the two passed sobriety tests as well as polygraph tests. Parker said he also passed a voice stress test. The ordeal seemed like it was over, but for Parker it was just beginning. The news spread worldwide, and according to news reports, Hickson didn't shy away from the attention. Parker, on the other hand, didn't want it. In the years that followed, he said he changed jobs and relocated to other towns when people realized who he was. It was just something he didn't want to discuss. So I've been going through 45 years of this this October. I've never talked about it or wanted to talk about it. I have very few friends, but they are true friends. They never ask about it, and I never talked about it. My family never talks about it. After decades of largely not discussing the event, Parker began to change his mind. After attending a funeral, we came in contact with people he hadn't seen in many years, and they felt more, f and he felt they focused more attention on him than the deceased. I signed the registry at the funeral, and the people recognized my name. Out of respect for the family, I just left. My wife told me on the way home, you need to write about it. So we considered what happened at the funeral, and after years of speculation about what happened on the night, on the river and his health, he eventually agreed. I felt like everyone deserved an explanation. Everyone has an expiration date, and I wanted to get this out before I die. I've had some near-death experiences, and I'm in bad health, so I just wanted to do it, he shares. And so, it felt like it lifted a weight off his shoulders getting it out there. So what do you guys be believe? Do you think there's alien abductions that happen? If you've been listening to this channel... Um, for quite a while, you'll know that I do completely uh, and have absolutely no doubts about it. None absolutely at all, as I've shared with you guys. Um, and one of the reasons why I always get so maybe a little bit fluxed uh, when people just want to make everything be a demon it's because um, I've had these experiences myself, so I could tell the difference between a demon and interdimensional slash ET and uh, something more angelic. Um, there are differences. They're not all the same thing. And, um, you know, as somebody that's experienced it firsthand, it's real. And I think it's part of uh, the the ant farm that we live on here uh we're, we're being watched by groups that have exper experimented on us for thousands of years and you know in all likelihood have been altering us genetically as they've gone along for whatever purpose and reason um it's just part of their bigger plan and so i'm a believer so this one, UFO conspiracy theorists embrace a shaky video taken at North Carolina's Lake Norman, which I know very, very well, and having lived in both North Carolina and South Carolina, and here you could see it, this object. Now, you know, the video is very, very shaky, and so you guys will have to um, make your own opinions on this. Is this CGI? Um, I'll let you guys play it on your own. Is it CGI on top of it? Hard to say. Um, it's, it's clearly interesting. I do totally think the big triangles are really ours. They're humans uh, controlling the big triangles. Different case with some of the... You, could, you have a mixed bag when it comes to the saucers because we know the Nazis were making their own versions of saucers for quite a while. And so there are probably humans on board many, many saucers, as well as perhaps uh, things other than human as well. So this video is definitely gaining traction on social media and is suggesting a huge UFO was recently spotted over North Carolina's Lake Norman, which is just north of Charlotte. And this footage is from May 29th by Jason Swing. It shows a long, slender object hovering for more than two minutes over the man-made lake. And Swing calmly calls the object the spacecraft in his video. It's been raining all morning. Rain finally stopped, so we went to pick up a boat from Lake Norman. 
when I come around the corner I see that thing sitting still very close so see what you guys think you know see what your feelings are is it real cigar shaped UFOs are supposedly reptilian or Draco in origin and so you know if this is that then it would perhaps be a Draco ship a reptilian ship but you guys make your own opinions Russian warships entered Gibraltar waters for combat training days after the Royal Navy intercepted them in the English Channel. Two vessels sailed past the British territory on the way to Mediterranean Sea in the week, for the weekend. And here you can see the two Russian vessels with the British vessel you know, uh, following. And you know, again, it's all the World War III hype fears. Conspiracy theories are more rampant than ever can they be stopped why would you want them to be stopped as they're turning out to be you know for the most part we're finding that most of the conspiracy theories have been kind of right the whole time uh so many of them have i don't think that you know i don't think it's something that we uh even need to debate really i mean do you guys think that i mean i go way back so i mean i remember uh, thinking about nonstick pans, you know, they were going to be an issue, and it turns out they were an issue going back to the 80s, you know, where people were starting to warn about the health uh, risks with them, health risks associated with microwaves, which, which again, you know, there are um, chemtrails, which now I think most people recognize. Yeah, they're spraying. I mean, there's so many declassified documents as well. Um, we could go on and on and on about this. I mean, think about how many people thought maybe there was a shadow government back in, say, the 70s, the 80s, even the 90s. Now, I think the vast majority of people recognize there's a shadow government. The Illuminati conspiracy, I mean, all these, it goes on and on and on. And, of course, they're looking at Q. It goes on and on and on. So, you know, it's not like... Why would you want to stop the conspiracy theories? Unless you want to just basically get rid of the First Amendment, which is happening, as, as we have been making note of. Because, yeah, conspiracy theorists, much of the time, are way ahead of the curve. And so this is current wildfires that we see going on, and, and type 1s are in red, so these are the more... Um, severe ones that we're seeing but there's quite a few as you could tell I mean the West is burning and it was burning last year it's burning again this year and we've talked all about the uh, the reasons for that as we take a look at the latest on uh, Arctic sea ice volume our year 2018 is in black right here and so as you see going back to 2004 the only year that had more sea ice is 2014 and so this gray area this gray zone is 2004 to 2013 running average and so you can see um, arctic sea ice is is actually you know fairly high for recent years and apparently increasing in thickness so we had talked about this process that they were doing on mice and now this anti-aging breakthrough aging process reversed now in human cells for first time as well. So scientists have successfully reversed the process of aging cells for the first time in a move which could help beat the likes of Alzheimer's and dementia. And obviously everybody would love to be healthier and live longer, or as this says, ultimately live forever. I'm not sure if we'd all want that though. And now researchers have made a breakthrough. As the body ages, it loses the ability to control how genes are regulated, and they ultimately become more damaged until we die. A gene is activated by signals from inside or outside the cell to make a molecular message known as RNA. The decision on what type of message is created by a group of 300 proteins is known as splicing factors. However, as we get older, the amount of splicing factor the proteins are able to make steadily decreases. Older cells are then ultimately less able to turn genes on and off to react to the environment, which makes them more vulnerable to diseases which ultimately kill us off. However, researchers have found a way of turning the splicing factors back on. 
and uh, this is done with the mitochondria, which the mitochondria, as we know, is the that's the power cell, the power source in the cells. So by using a molecular postcode, quote unquote, we have the ability to deliver a molecule directly to the mi mitochondria, the structures that produce energy in the cells, where we think it acts allowing us to use tiny doses which are less likely to cause side effects. Personally, I think all the answers lie in our mind, you know, and, and not our brain, but our mind. The origin of the oh my god particle. So, and as this is showing right here, uh, gamma ray bursts from different from distant stars, as shown in the artist illustration, are one possible source of the ultra powerful OMG particles that occasionally hit scientist detectors here on Earth. And right now, as you read this very text or listen to my voice, your DNA is getting sliced up by tiny invisible bullets. The damage dealers are known as cosmic rays, even though they are absolutely not rays. But the names stuck from a historical misunderstanding. Instead, they're actually particles, electrons and protons mostly, but occasionally heavier things like helium or even iron nuclei. These cosmic particles are trouble because they're fast and so they have a lot of kinetic energy to toss around. And they're also electrically charged. This means they can ionize our poor DNA nucleotides, ripping them apart and occasionally leading to uncontrollable replication errors, aka cancer. As, this was, as if this wasn't bad enough, every once in a while, roughly once per square kilometer per year, a particle comes screaming into our upper atmosphere at truly monstrous speeds, knocking against hapless nitrogen or oxygen molecules and cascading into a shower of lower energy, but still deadly, of course, secondary particles. There's only one appropriate response when confronted with a particle of such preposterous potential. OMG! Fastballs. OMG was the nickname given to the first example of what we are now known as ultra-high-energy cosmic rays detected in 1991 by the University of Utah's Fly's Eye Cosmic Ray Detector. That single proton slammed into our atmosphere going just about exactly the speed of light. It's just a hair off. Probably not even a hair. And no, you know, as it says, because it's reading 99.9 .9 with about 29s after it, 5.1%. Uh, it really was that fast. This particle had the same amount of kinetic energy as a decently thrown baseball, compressed down to the object the size of a proton. This means the particle had over 10 million times more energy than the most powerful particle collider, the LHC, can produce. Due to relative, relativistic time dilation, at that speed, the OMG particle could travel to our nearest star, Proxima Centauri, in 0.43 milliseconds, milliseconds of the particle's own time. It could continue on to our galactic core by the time you've reached he finished reading this sentence from its own perspective. Oh my God, indeed. So since that particle's detection, we've continued to watch the skies for these extreme events using specialized telescopes and detectors across the world. All told, we've recorded about a hundred of these OMG class particles in the past few decades. And those few dozen examples both elucidate and deepen the mysteries of their origin. More data is always good, but what the heck in our universe is powerful enough to give a proton a good enough crack that it could almost, almost challenge light itself to a race? And that's, that's a, uh, a good thing. And they go into different possibilities, including supernovas and various types of magnetic fields. And uh, honestly, they just don't know. And it's very, very interesting because all this obviously can play havoc with our DNA as we've been talking about. And we know we're in a highly energetic part of the universe right now. And we know we have our shields down. We are naked and exposed and getting more naked by the day. 
and more exposed by the day to these particles. So this is, you know, very interesting stuff. Vagus nerve stimulation, right? Vagus nerve stimulation dramatically reduces inflammation. Stimulating the vagus nerve reduces inflammation and the symptoms of arthritis. And so many of you might not be familiar with this nerve, but we'll get into it a little bit here. Inflammatory responses play a central role in the development and persistence of many diseases and can lead to debilitating chronic pain. And in, in fact, everything is about inflammatory response when you get down to so many diseases, you know, especially autoimmune and, and, and chronic ones. In many cases, inflammation is your body's response to, to stress. Therefore, reducing fight or flight responses in the nervous system and lowering biological markers for stress can also reduce inflammation. Typically, doctors prescribe medications to combat in inflammation. However, there's growing evidence that another way to combat inflammation is by engaging the vagus nerve and improving vagal tone. And guess how this could be done? Take a guess, guys. This, this can, can be, be achieved, achieved through, through daily, daily habits such as yoga and meditation. Tai Chi and Qigong. So, so if, if you, you want, want a little, little bit more of a physical explanation for why Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, and meditation are so powerful, it's the effect they have on this particular nerve as well as the whole nervous system in general. And this is part of what we're discovering. So your mind can basically help with inflammation. And this is a simple explanation of why. And your mind can cure so many illnesses. And as they're saying, this can be achieved through daily habits such as yoga, meditation, qigong, tai chi, or in more extreme cases of inflammation such as rheumatoid arthritis by using an implanted device. But let's not go that route yet. <coughs> Excuse me there. And so, you know, there's, there's no re you know, the medical profession, of course, they look at it like, well, we can implant the device and we can make, you know, $750,000 on this procedure or a million dollars on this procedure. Well, that's why they want to implant a device in you because they want to make money. You know, just take, save your money and learn a healthy habit like yoga or qigong and meditation because these are transformative. The vagus nerve is known as the wandering nerve because it has multiple branches that diverge from two thick stems rooted in the cerebellum and the brainstem that wander to the lowest viscera of your abdomen, touching your heart and most major organs along the way. Vagus means wandering in Latin. The words vagabond, vague, and vagrant are all derived from the same Latin root. So in 1921, a German physiologist named Otto Louis discovered that stimulating the vagus nerve caused a reduction in the heart rate by triggering a release of a substance he called vagostoff, German for vagus substance. The vagus substance was later identified as a acetylcholine and became the first neurotransmitter ever identified by scientists. So acetylcholine is like a tranquilizer that you can self-administer simply by taking a few deep breaths with long inhales, with long exhales. Consciously tapping into the power of your vagus nerve can create a state of inner calm while taming your inflammation reflex. The vagus nerve is the prime component of the parasympathetic nervous system, which regulates the rest and digest or the tend and befriend responses. On the flip side, to maintain homeostasis, the symp sympathetic nervous system drives the fight or flight response. So healthy vagal tone is part of a feedback loop linked to positive emotions. Healthy vagal tone is indicated by a slight increase in the heart rate when you inhale and a decrease in the heart rate when you exhale. Deep diaphragmic breathing with long, slow exhales is the key to stimulating the vagus nerve and slowing heart rate and blood pressure, especially in times of performance anxiety. 
This is why it works, explaining it in a more medical sense. And so, what should you do? Again, yoga, qigong, meditation, tai chi, tremendous healthy practices really everybody should do every single day. It really is going to be one of the keys to your overall health, my friends. And so, as always, please do thumbs up to support the channel, subscribe and join our family, which is growing. Click the bell, make sure you get all the updates, share with as many people as possible, and double check your uh, subscription, make sure it's still active. So many people are not getting uh, notifications, but there'll be a, a video every single day, maybe 360 days of the year. Um, so, my friends, may you always be blessed and guided from above and from within. May you be blessed with abundant peace, love, happiness, and wellness, and good health. And may you always be kept safe now and forever, my friends. God bless and namaste.